I'm here with David Gillespie. He's the author of a new book, The Sweet Poison Quit Plan, which is urging us all to cut sugar out of our lives in order to feel better and lose weight. So David, what happened when you gave up sugar? So I lost about six stone. Um, and it took me about a year. But the really good thing about it is that that was 10 years ago and I've stayed exactly the same weight since then, which is something that's never happened before in my life. Uh, every other year, I was putting on a little bit more weight and just getting fatter and fatter. So we all know that there's plenty of sugar in, um, in things like chocolate and candies and soft drinks. We all know that. But when I read David's book, I was so surprised by the idea that there's so many healthy foods that are actually super high in sugar. So David's going to go through some of those with us and help us find alternatives. Yeah, so this is not a message for people who are you know, knocking back uh, cans of Coke and Mars bars. They know what they're doing and they don't care. This is a message for someone who thinks they're doing the right thing, eating all the healthy stuff, eating the healthy breakfast cereal, the cereal bars, all that sort of thing, feeding their kids all the right stuff, but really giving them more sugar than the person who's eating the, the Coke and the, and the Mars bar. And these, these are the sorts of things that you might give to kids, for example. So you might put a couple of boxes of these uh, raisins into uh, a child's lunchbox and give them that plus their morning tea. Uh, the trouble is that when you put that much raisins, which is these little boxes, but that's the equivalent of one of the little boxes that normally go into a child's lunchbox, that's about 100 grapes worth of raisins. Now, there's 100 grapes, I didn't count them, but I think it's about 100. No kid is going to eat that and expect to eat morning tea as well. They'll happily knock over that and do it. And the reason is because all of the water has been taken out of the grapes and all that's left is the sugar. 70% sugar in a raisin. So how much sugar would be in those? Uh, what, you, you're talking at least three or four teaspoons worth of sugar. Um, and, and it's that plus whatever else the child eats for morning tea or lunch or afternoon tea. Um, what are the alternatives? Well, give them some nuts instead. If they don't like nuts, um, give them dry cracker biscuits or even crisps. Now, a kid will think crisps are a real treat, uh, but they're actually getting a lot less sugar, well, in fact, none with crisps. What about the grapes? Are they a good alternative? I mean, they're not going to eat 100, they'll eat a lot less. No, they? absolutely. Give them uh, grapes or any whole fruit. Uh, grapes are probably one of the less great choices. An apple, a banana, anything. As long as it's the whole fruit in its original packaging, you'll be fine. So these things here say 80% fruit. So obviously they're healthy, aren't they? These are designed for busy parents who don't even want to have to deal with the fact that fruit goes off and you're going to have to toss it out. <laughs> so this is to put in the cupboard and it, it says all the right things for a parent. This is as good as a piece of fruit as far as the manufacturer is concerned. This is what? 60-70% sugar. 60% this one. Uh, that is not a substitute for fruit. Uh, it's a substitute for dried fruit but it's not a substitute for fruit. So what you're saying is that one of these bars is actually 60% sugar. That's right. It's so small as well. So you might as well be giving them a packet of sugar as give them this, and it's certainly not equivalent to giving them fruit. Right, okay. So cereal is a real minefield when it comes to sugar. And things like Dorset cereals, obviously I thought these were really healthy. What do you think? 40% sugar. So that means that in 100 grams, you got 40 grams or 10 teaspoons of sugar already in the cereal. And you look at the ingredient list on this and it pretty quickly becomes apparent that the primary ingredient in this thing is dried fruit, which is largely sugar. And with this one in particular, they've even sweetened the dried fruit so that it's got even more sugar in it. That is not an appropriate breakfast cereal. No one's gonna sit down to a breakfast cereal and add 10 teaspoons of sugar to it, but that's what you're doing when you pour that out of a pack. So for every 100 grams of that, 40 grams of it is pure sugar? Is sugar. <laughs> when you put it like that, it's terrifying. Now, if you want to look at an alternative, something like this. So anything that's, that's a, a wheat or oat uh, that isn't flavoured or sweetened mm -hmm. is going to be fine. There's almost no sugar in that. So that's an equivalent amount, but to get the same amount of sugar, you'd have to spoon in 10 teaspoons of sugar on top of that. And there's a huge difference in price. This is $3.79 and this is only $1.99, so that's quite a good deal. So let's have a look at what 
the difference between this and that would be in sugar terms. Yeah, absolutely. So, so I'm actually... Now, you're sitting down to breakfast. Here, you're, you're set to go. You just pour it out of the box, you're done. Here, to get the same amount of sugar, you've got to add 10 teaspoons of sugar in there. Now, if you sat down to breakfast and your child was doing that, <laughs> you'd start to worry. Well, I'm only up to four, five, <laughs> six, seven, God, eight, nine, there ten. you go. Now they're equivalent. <laughs> so, so I find shopping a minefield. So when we're reading labels, what's an acceptable level of sugar to look for? If it's got sugar in the ingredients, then look at the per 100 gram column. And if it's under three in the per 100 gram, good rule of thumb, it's acceptable. So under three grams for every 100 grams is acceptable. Any more, forget it.